Today we're taking a look at a cheap spindle sander I got off of Amazon and we're modifying it to fit in a cabinet. I realize most of you know what an oscillating spindle sander, but for those of you who don't, it's just a drum sander that moves up and down. It makes for a really nice finish on the edge of a cut, and it saves on some sandpaper as well. Now this one is the Wen. This is $104 off of Amazon. As far as I know, it's the cheapest one you can buy off of Amazon. And this isn't my first one. This is my second one. I've had this one for about four months. The one I had before I had for a couple of years, but I left it in my shop up in Michigan, so I am buying a replacement. It was still going strong. I'm absolutely 100% happy with these particular machines, and I have friends that have been using them for a while too that love them as well. Now, spindle sander works pretty easy. There's a geared shaft that comes out of a motor. There's two pulleys, and one of those pulleys has a few less teeth than the other. And then there's these nodules that stick out that rub against each other. So as one spinning a little faster than the other, they raise and lower the spindle shaft. It's pretty straightforward. Now dust collection on these things also really simple and works very well. So I wanted to build this one into the cabinet that I'm building into the shop and I wanted to have dust collection as well. So I bought a cheap um, shop vac and I'm just going to build that right into the cabinet so I don't have to look at it. And I messed up on my initial measurements when I measured this space for the for the, the shop vac, so I had to extend the bottom out a little bit. Now I want the top of the spindle sander to match the existing top of the cabinet, and to do that, I had to make a little bit of a modification to this build out here. So this one's actually going to sit a little lower than the existing cabinet, but the top of the spindle sander will be flush with the existing cabinet. I hope that makes sense. So to do this, I'm doing two layers on the top. Now the first layer, I'm going to just kind of trace out everything and then I'm going to come back and move my line in a little bit and just cut out a small lip. That's going to have the uh, spindle sander um, top sitting right on that lip. And then on the top part, I am going to um, just do a perfect trace out of the top of the spindle sander so the top will sit recessed into the top part and that should be plenty sturdy to hold this thing in place. So after getting all my layouts I cut that out on the... <laughs> this is looking an awful lot like a toilet seat. <laughs> um, I cut it out on the... Uh... I'm like a kid. I'm like a two-year-old kid here. <laughs> I cut it out on the bandsaw and then on the cabinet I used my jigsaw to cut that out and that little piece in the back is just a place for the uh, dust collection um, hose to come out. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> So once I got everything cut out, I set the spindle sander where it's going to go in place and put the top of the top <laughs> over the top of the spindle sander. It's a lot of tops. And um, it fit well, so I just pre-drilled some holes and ran some screws right through the top. I am painting this. I, I had thought about doing uh, gray for mic on this, but it would have been um, a little over 360 bucks to do the whole countertop and it was $37 in paint, so it's kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> now, normally I would use Bondo to fill holes like this in a situation where I'm doing it on a countertop that's gonna be painted. I didn't have any, so I used Timbermate. Um, and I, the reason I use Timbermate or Bondo is because they dry super fast, and I don't wanna sit around waiting forever for the filler to dry. So with that done, all I had to do now was to put the edge on the cabinet, and as you can see, I'm using two by fours. This is a shop cabinet, remind you, so. Just some 2x4s uh, nailed and glued on, onto the uh, plywood and uh, came back with a little more filler just to fill up any of those imperfections that might show up through the paint. At this point, it's just a matter of sanding everything out and um, painting it. Now, in this case, I am going to go stick with the gray that I've been using on the top and the sides of the cabinets. And then I'm running black trim around everything, black face frames, rails and styles, and then uh, trim on the sides. 
Now the trick to a ca painted counter surface, now I know it sounds a little weird, like it, it will get beat up over time, but it's more durable than you think. So three coats of paint, let it dry thoroughly for a day or two, a couple coats of lacquer, and then some furniture paste wax. And it really is pretty darn, pretty darn durable. So I put the backsplash in place because I needed to kind of position the grommet. This is where the cords are gonna come out of the cabinet for the uh, spindle sander and the uh, shop vac. And then I didn't want to put the switch on the si on the uh, door because I'm going to be op opening and shutting that for the dust collection to, to empty the dust bin. So I cut out a hole for the, uh, the switch on the side of the cabinet, well within reach. And I used a, um, a reciprocating saw blade that was way too big for <laughs> that, that job, but it made it work. So, <laughs> And then screwed the switch right onto the plywood and then connected it. Now I did have to extend a couple of the wires coming out of the saw to the switch, but that was pretty straightforward and easy. Then I used a super fancy painter's tape system for making the dust collection hose just a little bit bigger so everything would fit snug, and then connected the wires and dropped it in place. I still have to glue that grommet down. Once that was done, um, added a little bit of the trim to the side and gave it a test run. And of course it's working good. Now I'm not gonna put a door on yet. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do for the doors and drawer fronts on all this. But all in all, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's a super clean look. It'll all be closed in a cabinet. So I'm pretty happy with it. And I definitely highly recommend the WEN for those of you who are on a budget and just want a decent oscillating spindle sander to have in the shop. I'll put a link in the description box below. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you soon.